Hello. Welcome to today's first workshop in the Brunch and Learn series. This will be module one of being authentically you, building on a foundation of your core values. I'm Matt Kenyon, and I am from Free Thought Coaching, and I'm going to be your facilitator today. I want to welcome all of you. I am super excited to have you here with me today, whether you are joining live or you're watching a, a uh, recording later. I really want to give you a heartfelt thank you for joining. Uh, today, we're going to be going over and exploring several key points around values. Over the next four weeks, we'll be covering what are values and how knowing your values is important to you and your family. We'll look at two different types of values. We'll explore and discover our own personal values and how our values prioritize and how do they influence our daily lives as parents and leaders. And finally, we'll do a wrap up and do some group coaching. But before we jump in, we're going to take a minute to review some training guidelines so that we can ensure we all have a successful and enjoyable training. First, I want to ask that if you are, if you are not already, go ahead and put yourself on mute. If, you, if you're going to say something, you can always unmute yourself. The controls should be in the bottom left of your corner. If you don't see any controls at the bottom, move your mouse down to the bottom and they should show up for you. Uh, we also ask that you go ahead and say your name before you start to speak, just so everybody in the room can know who you are and we can put a face to the name. These trainings are much more valuable and fun when everybody gets involved. Okay, so let's start our journey. So if I were to ask you what your values are right now, would you be able to name them? This is actually a really important question when we, you consider the fact that our happiness, satisfaction with life, and the values we pass on to our kids are directly linked to our personal values and how we apply them in our own lives. Those values play a part in ours and our child's and our family's and our friend's success. Whether we realize it or not, our values influence our thoughts and emotions, which in turn affect our behaviors and choices. They influence our habits, our decisions, and in a broader sense, our way of being and interacting in the world. Our kids see our behaviors and decisions much more than we realize. So do all of our friends and our family and everybody. So it's supremely important that we get to know what our values are and be able to name them. They'll help guide us in all aspects of our lives. The best place to start in figuring out your values is to identify what matters most to you. So I invite you to pull out a sheet of paper, open up a Word doc or some keep notes and take down some notes as I go through this next section here. So by answering a few questions, we can make our values more clear. I'm going to put four questions up on the screen and I'd like for you to jot down answers to each of those. Here's our four questions. What would you buy for your family if you suddenly had an extra $5,000 and had to spend it within the next 24 hours? If your home was on fire and you could save three things, what objects would you save? If you could change one thing about the world, what would you change? And if you had all the time in the world and could spend more time on one thing, what would it be? All right, I'm going to go ahead and pause my video and give you two minutes to go ahead and jot down some answers to this, these questions. I encourage you to be honest in your responses. There are no right or wrong answers. It's just about insight. So
just want to jump in and let everybody know we've got about 30 seconds before we're going to move on. All right, so that's been about two minutes. I hope that was enough time for you to jot down some answers to the questions. Uh, so I see we've got one participant in the room. Jake, would you like to, uh, would you be willing to share a response to any one of those questions or all of them? I sure can. Um, this is Jake Searson. And what would I buy for $5,000? I had the next 24 hours to spend it, I would probably say a trip around Appalachian Mountains for two weeks. That's what I would break. Hmm. Interesting. All right. That's actually not a bad idea. What else do you have? Anything else you want to share? Um, if your home was on fire, you could save three things. Yeah. What objects would they be? Um, my entire filing case, because I had all my personal information in it. And sure. pro probably my bird. I know it's not an object, but it's a uh -huh. member of the household. So it's say my bird. Sure. And I'm stumped on the third one. I need some time to think about that. Huh. Well, it sounds like to me, like what you're valuing is, you know, with your $5,000 buying a trip. So it sounds like you value entertainment and, and having fun. And would, would you agree with that? Yes, that is correct. Cool. And, you know, taking your files sounds like, you know, having all of your pertinent documents and the things that, you know, allow you to live your life easily, easily is what you'd like to take with you in a fire. Does that sound about how you would interpret that? That is correct. Yes. All right. Cool. Thanks, Jake, for sharing. We're going to go ahead and, uh, and move on. Thank you. All right, so as we discovered from this activity, what's of value is unique to each person. You know, what one person may value is not simply, not exactly what another person may value. And by simply looking at what you regard as valuable, both in monetary and non-monetary ways, you can determine what your core values are. Values share the common thread of expressing what matters most to a person, what that individual feels is essential to their success and happiness. Conversely, we may also find that if we are not happy and successful, then it's a safe bet that we're not living in alignment with what we value. Let's now dive deeper and explore this idea of what we value and how it links to the notion of core values. The concept of value means that when we're talking about values, we're talking about the worth someone has assigned to something. This means both monetary and non-monetary worth. Whatever has the largest worth in an eyes of an individual also have the highest value. All right, so I need a volunteer and unfortunately you are the one that's up. You are the only person participating. So Jake, you're up for a volunteer. If I were to give you five seconds to decide which bill on the screen here would you choose, which one would it be? 100. I figured as much. All right. You know, most likely everybody chose that $100 bill. Thanks, Jake. So what we can do is we can look at this and we can say, yeah, it's about the worth, right? It's, it's about what is the worth that we give that dollar bill or that $100 bill. Uh, is there anything, Jake, that you can think of that's uh, another tangible good uh, that you might want to uh, make sure to hold as a, as a high value or high worth. Other than money, are you referring to? Other, other than money. I'm drawing a blank at the moment. No worries. No worries. So how about some intangible things, things that can't be seen or touched? Is there anything you can think of that might come to mind that has a high value that's an intangible thing? Memories. Memories. Cool. I know I think immediately of like relationships and friends, things that 
you know, you can't really touch, but it has a high value, right? Thank you. So as you can see, these aren't really as clear cut as the dollar bill, which we can generally all agree on, but in the terms of intangible things, we tend to vary quite a bit. So the values of some things can be looked at in terms of dollar value assigned to it, such as a paycheck or gold, uh, but values often determined in more abstract ways, depending on a person's individual beliefs, experiences, principles, professional goals, and ideals. So with that concept of value in mind and the idea of something worthwhile, having the highest value, let's turn our attention now to the term values. What does it mean and why knowing your core values is so important to creating a happy and successful life? So let's go ahead and pull out a sheet of paper again and go ahead and take some notes while I go through this mini lecture. And at the end, I'm gonna ask you to uh, identify what stood out for you. So a person's beliefs, experiences, principles, and ideas help shape their values. And what do we mean by the term values? Let's deepen our understanding by exploring three important questions. What are values? In its simplest expression, the term values refers to the inner standards from which a person acts and by which their behavior is evaluated. Values operate within a person and a family unit or a team, whether they recognize it or not. A person's values say something about what they view as important and worthwhile. Those things can be both tangible and intangible. For example, someone may value extended family and maintain meaningful connections with members of their extended family while creating a pleasant home environment for their immediate family. Another person may value beauty and will surround themselves with art and nature. A third person values health and adheres to a healthy diet and makes sure they get plenty of exercise. Values are like a lighthouse meant to direct and guide you through your journey. It's like giving your child a compass to carry in their pocket. When things get confusing, they can pull their values out and use them to reorient themselves and get back on track. Values help define who an individual is and help that person to determine their life's priorities. The degree of fulfillment a person experiences in life is directly related to whether their important values are honored. Knowing values allows a person to be more thoughtful about their choices and actions instead of just reacting to what is going on in their lives. They have a solid foundation. In fact, this brings to mind a thought of something that I've often heard, be the wind, not the leaf. The leaf gets blown around by the wind, ends up in places that it may or may not like and generally complains about where it's at and doesn't know how it ended up there. The wind, however, has the power. The wind controls where it goes, it directs itself. In fact, it directs the leaf. Be the wind, not the leaf. Am I having values? You know which way to direct that wind. So you can think of your values like being behind the steering wheel of a car. When you don't know your values, you find yourself in the back seat instead of in the driver's seat. We all know that those sitting in the back seat are the ones that complain. Why? Because they feel like they don't have any control. But by knowing our values, we can feel more in control because our values help us live more intentionally. There are two kinds of values that we can operate from. First, let's talk about fear-based values. Fear-based values are values that cause us to take action to avoid something bad. They're the have to's, not want to's. There are things we feel we have to value, not what we want to value. Fear-based values are usually followed by an or else. However, conscious-based values, on the other hand, allow a person to take positive action in their lives. They're the things that they truly value in their life. They're the qualities and desires that truly motivate a person's desired behavior. We're happiest when we're honoring our conscious values. All right, now that we've gotten through that, anybody want to share, namely Jake, anybody, do you want to share what uh, stood out for you while I went through that lecture? 
Yes, for for vet for my values gave me something to think about, and family, friends, and honesty and courage are the four things that really kind of popped out. Having the courage to move forward and take that take those risks, try something new. That's awesome. That's really good. I'm glad you got something out of that. Thanks, Jay. Thanks for sharing. You're welcome. So we're all living our values, whether we realize it or not. Whether they are fear-based or conscious-based, it makes no difference. We're still living those values. And if you don't know what your conscious values are, you'll live reactively to life instead of proactively through your own choices, desires, and dreams. You'll find yourself being the leaf, not the wind. So it's important for you to identify your conscious values and then live them because they will guide your behavior and therefore your life. Determining your core values is a fun and enlightening process. It allows you to tap into the deeper part of you that makes you who you are. That's the end of this training for today. Next time, we'll move on to module two of this workshop, Being Authentically Youth, building on a foundation of your core values. And we'll focus on two important ways that you can discover your core values. Again, I want to thank everybody for coming and watching this, whether you were here with us live in the Zoom classroom, watching a live restream, or watching a recorded video weeks and months later. Thank you so much for joining me, and I hope you got something out of it. Have a great week.